What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. And you know what? No matter how many times that we go over sun protection on the boat, it is one of the most asked questions. And there's been a couple of things that have happened uh, since we did a sun protection episode before. There have been some innovations. There have been some new products that come out. And I've learned a little bit about it and changed my protocol. My protocol started out as wearing shorts and a T-shirt on the boat, um, with a baseball cap and sunglasses and getting burned to a crisp. That didn't last very long because you can't survive the Florida Keys sun for very long uh, if you don't take care of yourself. And taking care of yourself is definitely applying sunscreen, definitely being very careful about how much uh, sun you get. And, you know, I applied sunscreen. I tried different things. Um, Didn't really like the sunscreen. I'm not really a big fan of having to apply and reapply and reapply and reapply sunscreen throughout the day because if that is going to be your sole means of uh, sun protection, that's exactly what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to reapply it many times throughout the day. And one thing that I learned from one of my dermatologist clients is that sunscreen does not work immediately. So, I mean, maybe zinc oxide or something that has 100% blockage does work immediately. But when you put sunscreen on, you're going to get some sun for a little while. And if you decide that, um, oh, at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, man, I feel like I've gotten a little too much sun, you're going to put on sunscreen and maybe it won't work for another Uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe it's even an hour. I don't know what it is exactly. I don't even really care, but I know that it doesn't work immediately. So the advice that he gave me that really made a big difference is to have sunscreen in the bathroom when you're getting ready. You're brushing your teeth, you're getting ready for the day. You take the sunscreen, you apply it in the mirror so that you see that you get everywhere And then it has a couple of hours to kick in and work. And when I started doing that, I noticed that I was getting far less sun throughout the day. That was a great tip. I really appreciate that. And I started to use it. I don't really care for sunscreen. I've said it a lot of times and I'll say it again. I'd rather not use it if I don't have to. There is a way that you don't have to use sunscreen and that is to stay covered up or in the shade all day. Obviously, if you're inside the salon on an offshore boat, you probably don't need sunscreen. You're out of the sun, right? Well, if you are wearing a hat, you're wearing something covering your face, neck, everything, you might not have to wear sunscreen if you're very diligent about staying covered up. And that means lunchtime, that's the whole day. When you're drinking water, how are you going to do that without getting a lot of sun? So a lot of people will wear protective gear and sunscreen. Some people feel like they can just wear the protective gear, but if you watch them throughout the day, they rarely ever take it off. Now, the protective gear that we're talking about is that you definitely you need a hat. It's almost impossible to, uh, to fish without a hat. First of all, the fishing that we are doing in the Florida Keys, you really need to see into the water and blocking the sun from the top of your sunglasses definitely allows you to see better into the water, just like if you were to put your hand over your, over your uh, over your eyes like that to block a little shade. A baseball cap is my favorite hat because uh, it stays on in the wind. And I used to wear a floppy hat. Floppy hats were great on calm days, but when the wind starts blowing, the thing's blowing all over the place. You're probably getting more sun because it's coming in on your face. You're relying on this uh, hat to block the sun, but it's really blown up over the side of your head. You're getting tons of of, uh, sun on the side of your face. About 20 years ago, I found... Um, the buff, one of my customers brought the buff on the boat. You can see it's called buff. That's the name of the product. Uh, this one that I have right here is made out of recycled water bottles. That's pretty cool. And, uh, the buff is basically a sock comes on a card usually. And with this, there are no zippers. There's no Velcro. There's nothing on this. That's exactly the way I like it. No frills, just 100% sun protection. I put this on and we started wearing this a long time ago. And the buff is fantastic because you can bring it right up and cover your your head and your neck. So a lot of guys you'll see will kind of wear it like this all day long because they don't like to cover up their face. 
I'm the other way. I want to cover up. And I also think that the buff helps me to see into the water better. I can see fish better. So I'll be wearing some polarized sunglasses just like this. I'll bring the buff right up to the bottom of the polarized sunglasses, sometimes even covering the glasses. And I'm totally protected. You can see on the side of the, I'm not getting sun right here. I'm totally protected. You can adjust the uh, tightness of the buff by either putting it higher up on your head or further down. Like I say, a lot of guides you'll see, they will they will just wear it like this. And it's protecting the side of their face. It's protecting their neck and the back of their neck. Now, there was a kind of a funny thing that used to happen when I first started wearing the buff. I would wear it with a long sleeve t-shirt. Um, and the t-shirt would get kind of a little baggy or whatever. And it would kind of sag a little. And you would have kind of a V in front where your, your shirt was or, or kind of a ring in front. And then on the back of your neck, there would be about a one inch, maybe one and a half inch area that wasn't covered. As you looked around, the buff would slide up, the t-shirt would slide down, and you were left with just a little bit of, uh, of a ring. And that could be pretty painful and you could get a lot of sun there. Definitely want to cover that up with sunscreen. So I used to just put sunscreen right there. But now we have these hooded t-shirts, which are awesome. And the one that I've got on right now, this one is a hook shirt. This was made by Waypoint, or, or it's a uh, Waypoint product. That's the product line. So the hook Waypoint shirt, it has, a, it has a hood built into it, right? So I put this up, and it covers the back of my neck completely. So it's covering the side of my face a little bit. But when you wear this in conjunction with the buff, you're completely 100% protected. It could be blowing 30 miles an hour and it's not blowing the hood down because it, you can obviously put this, a lot of times I'll put the hood right on this little, this little button on top of your hat and that's just enough to hold it on there. Um, it works perfect. The wind will not blow that down. I put the buff up, put the hood up, and I am totally protected. So buff goes up, sunglasses first. Sunglasses on, the buff goes up, the hood goes up, and I'm good to go. I can be out in the sun all day long. You'll start seeing um, other people, if you're paying attention, that have this combo too, like people that work on the road crews uh, in Florida. A lot of those people are wearing uh, hooded t-shirts and buffs as well because Man, they are out in the sun just like a fishing guide. It is incredibly important to protect yourself. And for us as fishing guides, as people that like to go fishing, as customers, especially as customers, you're spending a ton of time inside. And you go on this trip that you've been waiting to go on for a long time. And on day one, people get so sunburned that they literally have uh, second-degree burns on their face. Now, it could be that could be wrong first degree burn. I don't know. I've seen people blister up on their face. They've waited for this trip for a year. Day 1, they get so sunburned that they can't go day 2 or day 3. It's happened a lot. And the other place where you can get really sunburned is maybe you're like me and you've gotten a little bit older and maybe your hair has gotten a little bit thinner than you thought it was on top. When you wear a visor, like you always have, you want a visor your whole life. Man, you come in some days and you're like, oh man, why does my head hurt so bad? Well, your hair got a little thinner and you're getting sun up there. So if that's happening you got and you still want to wear a visor, you either have to put the buff all the way up there and be super careful about that. Cover, put sunscreen on your head. That's a place where you get burned a ton. Um, or move to a hat. And even a hat like this, You'll get sun right through this thing, man. Right through the the mesh part of this hat, you will. Probably the front part you're protected, but the mesh part, you'll definitely get uh you'll definitely get sun right through it. And it's a funny looking sunburn. So if you shave your head, if you're bald, if you don't have a lot of hair, be super careful on your head. The buff and the hooded t-shirt can definitely help. You can get that all the way up over, but you just want to make sure that you are completely covered. Ask somebody, ask your guide, is my head covered up? Because you're going to know it the next day. And that is not a good way to ruin your fishing trip that you have waited on for a year. Like, just protect yourself. So it starts in the morning, putting sunscreen on before you leave the house. Then 
you you want to buy the clothes. This is definitely worth the investment. You want to buy the clothes that you need. That includes a buff. Go with a buff brand. I don't know about the other brands, but I do know that buff has 50 sun protection in many of their products, and, and I trust it. I've been wearing it for a long time. That's the one to go with. Then you want a good hat that fits you properly, and I suggest that the hat is adjustable, right? There are the, all these other kind of hats that are not adjustable, and in a 20-mile-an-hour wind, when you're running in a skiff, a lot of times that is not enough. It might, be, it might feel pretty tight, uh, in the store or at home or whatever. But when you get out on the boat, a lot of times it's not, and you got to tighten this up one more notch than you normally would. So an adjustable hat, uh, snap, snap back is good. Put that on, put the buff on, put the hood on, and you definitely want some good quality polarized sunglasses. Um, I particularly like these because these are, uh, up to ANSI standards. So if you're going to buy safety glasses, they're going to be rated for ANSI standards, A-N-S-I standards. And these are Wiley X. These are my favorite ones, and they are just like safety glasses in addition to being good quality polarized glasses. You can get hit in the face with a lure. You can get hit in the face with a rod tip. Sometimes um, somebody might get hung in the um, in the bushes and they're pulling pulling their line to try to break it off and they have a jig on there and maybe if I tied a really good knot, it doesn't break. It comes out of the bushes like a gunshot back at the boat. And if that hits you in the eye, you're done. And I don't wear glass lenses. I only wear polycarbonate lenses and I make sure that they are ANSI standard lenses. That's just one of my phobias. You'll probably, you might be able to go your entire life and never get hit in the face with anything. But as a fishing guide, you get hit in the face a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've been hit in the face with a, with a fly rod tip. Somebody starts casting before they don't know where you are. When I had kids, they are constantly swinging their, their, um, their rods around. And I make it a point that no one, especially with kids around, no one can fish on the boat without sunglasses. So sunglasses are super important, not only just to protect yourself from the sun's rays, but also to protect yourself from lures, jigs, rod tips, accidents, all kinds of things. So super important. Um, this is definitely something where you want to spend your money wisely. You want to get some, some clothing that is sun protective. You want it to have a hood, if possible, long sleeves, long pants. Man, do that. And here's my best piece of advice. If you're going down for a week-long fishing trip and you want to come back with some sun, lots of people want to do that. You go back home and everybody's like, wow, where have you been, man? You look so tan. Awesome. That's fantastic. Don't worry. You're going to get plenty tan in the last couple of days of your trip. You don't want to go out on day one and try to get tan and try to get your sun. Day one is the day where you put on a ton of sunscreen, you keep your buff up all day long, and you just kind of ease into this thing. Trust me, even if you're covered up completely with sunscreen on, you're getting some sun. That's how strong the sun is down here. And if you haven't fished in the Florida Keys or anywhere close to the equator, you may think what I'm talking about is a complete uh, overreaction, but it's not. Fishing guides, they're pretty much one of the number one things that, that you have to watch out for as far as your health goes is sun cancer, right? Cancer from the sun, melanoma, and lots of guides get it. Lots of people that are out in the sun get it, and it is completely preventable, man. You just cover up, you, cable, you keep the sunscreen on, and you take really, really good care of yourself. And if you want that sun, if you want to come home with a little sun, do it on the last day. Do it on the second to last day, but don't do it on the first day. The day one is not the day to go out there in shorts when you've been sitting in an office for the last six months. Day one is a day where you put the long pants on, you put the long shirt, long sleeve shirt on, you put the buff on, the hat, everything. You, you, you're covered up. Maybe then later in the trip, you might wear a, a little less or give yourself a little sun or take the buff down for a little bit if that's what you want to do. 
not not really advisable because it is very very strong but you know while you're eating lunch um while you're getting some some water at the boat ramp at the end of the day while you're cleaning fish you get a lot of sun there you get a lot of sun there in fact sometimes you get more sun there than on the water when you're cleaning all your stuff up that's why you'll see guides and they will continue to wear the buff while they're cleaning fish they'll continue to wear the buff while they're while they're cleaning their boat they'll wear it all the time because if you take it off and you don't have sunscreen on that's when you get hammered hammered by the sun and getting hammered by the sun really sunburnt can not only be bad for your skin but it also makes you feel weak, run down, and wiped out. And if you are trying to catch a dream fish, you've saved up, you're going down to uh, to have a great trip, and you get too sunburned on day one, you're tired, you're not having a great trip, you're not having your best time. Protect yourself from the sun, drink plenty of water, and then just kind of ease into it. Cover up with sunscreen, cover up with good products like the buff and the hook stuff, and you're going to have the best trip ever. But, you know, don't worry about coming back tan. Come back without blisters. Come back without a sunburn. Make sure that you do that, and you're going to have the best trip ever. If you have any questions about sun protection, the different things that I use for sun protection, the type of sunscreen that I like for myself, which I don't particularly like any of them, um, but you can always text. You can text uh, 305-930-7346. That's the number. And you can ask a question there. You can, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what these different products are if you didn't get it from the, from the podcast. Or you can go to the show notes. We'll have all the products that I talked about here listed right there. And you can buy them right from the website. Or you can go buy them on your own. Or you can maybe you already have them. I don't know. Uh, but this is designed to be something to help you. And there are products out there like the hooded t-shirts that have really advanced sun protection in the flats fishing, offshore fishing space and highly, highly suggested. So I hope you have an awesome trip. A lot of people are getting ready for their trip this winter. Think about sun protection because it can definitely make your trip better or it can ruin your trip completely. All right, that's How To Tuesday for this week. We'll see you next week. Thank you.